the pearls also give the people peace, instilling them love and all the good virtues of God. The medium which we apply in everything that is done here in the fold is the word of God. The fruit by which the children of God are known is the word of God. This, thus, when people come across the publication of Brother of the Cross and Star or hear of any preaching by a brotherhood, it is confirmed that truly brotherhood is God. This is how you know that man is of God or of Satan, but the word that such a person utters is either of God or of Satan. Nobody knows his fellow man in the face, but man can be identified from the word that he speaks, for it is said, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, know we him no more. That was in Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Our Lord Jesus Christ said clearly that he is one with the Father. Now, who is the Father and who is Christ? They are both the Word of God. The Father is God. Our Lord Jesus Christ is God also. The worldly people are known for their evil utterances, while the children of God are known for their good and edifying utterances. Whether somebody is a prophet or not, his girdle, notwithstanding, identify the type of a prophet he is through the word that proceed out of his mouth. The case of becoming a member of one church or the other does not arise. Just listen to his words and you will be able to say what he is. There is no other way to assess a person as to know whether or not he is a child of God apart from his or her utterances. You could be conducted around a person's house to prove that he is not of the world, but what about the words that he utters that have already revealed him as Satan? As you visit a person, you might find out that the person's residence is filled with all types of concoction and charm, yet the words that proceed from his mouth are very edifying. Brethren, know that those charms and concoctions are there for no useful purpose, and the person is a child of God. I do not want to go into details. Let us have the second lesson read again. Second lesson, Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. Brethren, have you heard what is read to you? You are a good man, but you do not fornicate, tell lies, drink, and when you are not involved in other vices, above all, when no evil word proceeds from your mouth, but know that no good word can come out of you if you are a fornicator, a liar, a rogue, and someone given to evil designs. Brethren, this is why it is said, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. This is why you are enjoined daily to do away with sins such as adultery, uncleanness, 
lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, rivalry, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, murder, drunkenness, envying, revel reveling, quarreling. Anybody who indulges in such as cannot speak a good word. Brethren, it is a fact that you do not know the efficacy of the word. The word is capable of revealing what is right from your most hidden secret. There is no sin committed in the most hidden place that will not come to light. Many are led into thinking that they are betrayed by friends, brethren or neighbors, but I assure you that you are the very person betraying yourself. And Adaj says that it is the words that come out of the monkey that killed it. He who relies on the saying that man is saved by grace and not of the works of the flesh, for he cannot practice a word of God. He is a true picture of a child of Satan. But he who preaches and joins others to practice the word of God and does it practically is a child of God. So also is the person who forsakes and preaches against stealing, anger, fornication and other works of the flesh. Note that the letter you write to me reveals your identity. Brethren, there are also people who can engage you in a conversation and thereafter say exactly the type of person you are. Thus, you can realize that there is no other means of assessing a person's character as to whether he is the child of God or that of Satan, but by one's utterances. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words Thou shalt be condemned. You have been hearing from some of the people who claim to be saved by grace and not by works, while some, on the other hand, say that the, con that the congregation should practice what they preach and not what they themselves do. Now, I am asking for clarification of these two statements. Any person who preaches that others do what he preaches and not what he himself does is a thief and a robber and has got no word of God in him. It was for this reason that Christ himself asked the people to imitate him and do exactly what he does. He who speaks contrary to what Christ said is likened to a magician who asked the crowd to address him as a thief and a deceiver after which the people discover him to be so with regrets why do you blame yourself have you not been told who he is such a preacher is known through his words as a child of satan and not of god as it is your usual habit to confess every morning that you are a fornicator, a rogue, and one indulging in those things, God has forbidden. I am asking, what are you really after? For it is said, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin into salvation. Some of them, some often say that they are out to repay good for good and evil for evil. Such people are not of God, 
for there is no word of God in them. That is why I assure you that a child of God is never recognized by his face, but by his utterances. Paul, John the Baptist, Moses, and our Lord Jesus Christ all preach about themselves, and so are the preachers in the entire world. They preach about themselves because the tree is known by its fruits. A confusion is, for instance, preaches confusion, though he may not be aware of it, but his congregation would easily detect it. For the benefit of doubt, you can tour around all the churches in the world, say, on a Sunday. Being the only day they congregate to see if you would get any among them who has the word of God in them. After your finding, do not be surprised to come by a child along the street who preaches an inspiring word of God. So also you can come across an aged woman preaching the gospel to a group of people on the street. Listening to her preaching, you quickly recognize her as a child of God. That is why you are told never to inquire to know from where he who speaks the word of God comes from. Rather endeavor to know him as a child of God of God and God himself. Do not look for God in any place except in the word. Do not ask anybody of a person's behavior. Seek to know his conduct from the word such a person speaks. For this would enable you to know whether he is a child of God or a child of Satan. Can you imagine how a person's bank account comes into light irrespective of the fact that the person does not tell anyone note that during the person's business transaction he will tell his debtors that with the money he has in the bank he would be able to settle their debt under the terms agreed on. In order to save his face, he cannot afford to hide his bank account because this will facilitate his business transaction. Be watchful and listen attentively while conversing with a person for you will know the type of person he is and what he is capable of doing through his words. At times, in the course of eating with a friend, he warns you jovially. He warns you jovially that he would harm you. Be mindful of the person, for he is not joking, but telling you what he is capable of doing. Anytime you refer him to the statement he made. He would try to convince you that he was only joking by laughing it off. When you engage in a conversation and he recounts how his past life was spent in stealing and indulging in concoctions and charms, but that he has turned a new leaf, keep off from such a person, otherwise you will have yourself to blame. Should you admit him into your house, he can take away your wife. Who would be blamed for this? A brother would may tell you of his past life. Say he was an anti-brotherhood crusade, a deceiver, but that he is of now. But that as of now, he is a changed man. 
Do not take him by his word, for he is a liar. If given the, the light, if given the least chance, he would deceive you, and you would have yourself to blame, because he had already given you his identity, owing to the effective planning before execution by the whites. They are said to be enchanters and enchanted and enchantresses. It is a truism that they need not be rather before they undertake a mission to a place or undertake any investigation they have to get first hand information from the spies they organize for that purpose these include the character of the indigenes of such a place to be visited besides these investigators or missionaries could seek information from their colonial masters with whom the records of the different places in the world are kept. This was why at the time they came to colonize Nigeria, they were used to our ways of life. What do you understand by a testimonial? It is a record of one behavior over a certain time in a particular place, which is, at a glance, gives the prospective employer satisfaction or dissatisfaction about the person concerned. An interview is a medium whereby a person's mind is read regarding who the person is and what the person and what the person is capable of doing the answer given during the interview is a sort of revealers of a person's personality it is an unfortunate fact that the blacks are not quite advanced in this type of science hence an interview conducted by a black has no meaning. The worldly man does, speaks, and knows the things of the world. The godly man does, speaks, and knows the things of God. That is why the world is the children of God, for they are known by their words and deeds. Though God's children do not hate the worldly children. The children of God are childlike at heart. They abhor tricks, falsehood, and anger. The worldly children are filled with craftiness, falsehood, and all vices with which they employ to torment the children of God. The worldly people introduced Documents like agreement, credit notes, and affidavits. Whenever a thing is entrusted to a worldly man, he proves dishonest. Hence, the owner of such a thing seeks for a witness and a written agreement to that effect. Even if anything were given out on loan, a surety would be required. This is why our Lord Jesus Christ called the children of God sheep. You all know that sheep are fools. The children of God are truthful and do not seek an agreement to be made whenever they are dealing with others in terms of entrusting anything to another's care. Should they tell anybody that they keep some money with some other person without receipts or an agreement, they would be laughed at. They will be laughed to scorn 
and would be regarded as fool. The worldly people would wish they were in a position to have kept such monetary transaction without any receipt or surely because they could have made away with it. When the worldly people realize that the children of God place a premium on security, that when the worldly people realize that the children of God place no premium on security, they delight in duping them. The, this would not worry the children of God, for they know that God gives and God takes away. This is why the worldly children and the children of God are incompatible, even for eternity. The worldly people do not tell the truth. They do not carry out honest dealings with one another. They and they do not trust anybody since they themselves are never true to others. Their key word when transacting business with others is caution. They do not advise anybody to feel free with his fellow man. Their teachings reveal the type of people they are, whereas the children of God are apt to speak and admonish others. The children of God often narrate what they see and hear. They do not discuss anything about witches and apparition, nor do they tell people nor believe that there is any power apart from that of God. They tell people and discuss the existence of Jehovah God and his Christ as one entity, though they envisage these words of truth, the worldly people do not believe in them. God's children do not hate, do not fight, they do not retaliate and are not given to anger, nor exchange, nor, nor encourage others to practice these vices. Owing to this, their words are regarded by the worldly people as foolish. A child of God is known by his words. What you are is what you teach others to observe. A native doctor out of sheer inclination to dupe who tell you of what to use in order to sell with much profit. He will show you a ring that would protect you and to win you good luck. A thief in an attempt to show his love for a person would sell out an article of trade that costs fair about ten times the price he has sold the article for. The children of God hear and preach the word of God, while the ungodly get annoyed with it. This is the sign that distinguishes them from those of the world. Let the golden text be read again. Golden text, John chapter 4, verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Brethren, have you heard that statement? That is the statement which says that by its fruits, the tree is known, either make the tree good and is fruit good, or else the tree corrupt and is fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. All the children of God speak the word of God, therefore listen to it. When you see any person who detests hearing the word of God, do not question who he is or where he is from, for he is not of God. This is used in distinguishing the children of God 
from those of the world. Many are in brothers of cross and star do many are in brotherhood of the cross and star not for the word of God but to get their infirmities healed some also come to get their cases struck off while struck out while the word of God may not be for them or nor interest them. Many people come to brotherhood of the cross and star in order that one type of affliction and or the other may be cured and not because of the word of God. That is why when the gospel is being preached, the ungodly among us will carry the bag and go away or get engaged in conversation quite irrelevant to the gospel of God. Sometimes such class of people fall into slumber as soon as the gospel is preached. This is so because the word of God is not for them. No sooner the gospel is ended then they would be wide awake ready for the blessing procession at any time it is said that the holy father wants to bless people the ungodly would bring along all their near and distant relations to partake in the blessing this is no doubt does not portray one as a child of God. God says that the whole world shall be assembled together where the sheep will be separated from the goats and the judgment shall begin from the house of God. The Father reminds us that already judgment has begun and one could see clearly that the house of God is depleted of its members. The stone the builders rejected has become the head of the cornerstone. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ told the multitudes who sought for him that they did not seek for him because they wanted to hear the word of God but that it was because they were well fed with enough bread Christ then told them that they should not see they, that they should not look for the food that will perish but they should look for the food that will live till eternity our Lord Jesus Christ emphasized that judgment has started from the house of God as is evidenced by its emptiness. This emptiness remarked by the Lord features every morning and evening that the stone the builders rejected has become the, head, the chief cornerstone he told the multitude that they did not look for him because they saw the sign, but because they were sumptuously fed with bread. He then told them not to look for meat that will perish, but should look for that meat that will give them eternal life. Why do some brotherhood members who have remained here for 20 years and have been hearing the words of God unable to preach or put into practice the words of God? The fact is that when this set of members hear the word of God, they find the words absolutely difficult for them to practice. They then decide to return to their former churches where they can practice the words of God 
the way that they like quite contrary to what God wants the words of God continue to disturb their mind day and night they have ears but cannot hear it appears the spiritual power continues to wage war with them right from the presence of the Father where they are told not to fight they will continue to fight as if the Father has asked them to fight the situation will be so confusing that some members will question among themselves what is actually the matter despite the fact that the Father has enjoined these people to desist from fighting they continue to fight in his presence the Father warns that the words of God must be fulfilled those who are the children of God will surely hear and do the words of God but those who are not though they have got ill they cannot hear neither will they be able to do the words of God about 99 percent of the members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star are here for the words of God being ready to do them and they are sustained by the words of God as the Father gives them the ability to do many people who live in distant countries are yearning to come to Calabar they maintain that if only they can come to Calabar and listen to even one word from the Father's mouth all their problems will be over sure enough but they pay their way to actualize their intention and remain unchanged because the tree is known by its fruit our saving grace and that of the entire world is that the holy spirit has come by himself so that whether we like it or not we must be changed or transformed all those carnal people as soon as the holy spirit is inborn in the children of god the same must enter into the worldly people so that we may become one finally there must be one flock under one shepherd this is why baptism is necessary once the people of the world are baptized the holy spirit will enter into them and transform them they will live as children of god and will be led by the holy ghost as time goes on as they come in here to listen to the father's gospel all will be well with them they will have relief those who are worldly do not come here and do not want to hear the words of god all they want is to stand at a corner looking for somebody who will light a candle and prepare concoctions and charms for them if a visioner had told them all their problem they will ask for treatment and show willingness to pay for such treatment they will even be dissatisfied with any prayer offered and the pronouncement that all is well with them and that they should go in peace they would ask is that all here is money i will pay whatever you demand because i want to live the person will then accept the money and pray for god's forgiveness he would express his surprise at the unbelief of this set of people and would take from them up to three thousand naira this is how children of god are 
made to fall. Preach whatsoever you can to convince the people of the world. They continue in their ways. It can then be seen that apart from our Lord Jesus Christ, no one else can do these things. That is why all the sinners are waiting for him as no other person can change the sinners except him who died for our sins. He has come to change sinners unto himself. Some people are astonished when they see native doctors with whom they engage in preparing charms and concoctions now engaging themselves in spiritual revival work and those who wonder ask how it all happened this is in compliance with what our lord jesus christ promised that he would send the comforter the promised comforter has indeed come and he is the one doing the work this is the reason that the entire world is surprised at seeing those of you who vowed that you would never forsake drinking, fornication and other vices, however it is preached. Now change. Now that the Holy Spirit has entered into us and has transformed us, it has become a great surprise how great the love of God is. The scripture says, as you bore the image of the earthly man and cause confusion, you will now bear the image of the heavenly man. As many of our earthly friends see us transformed by the Holy Spirit, they vow not to come to brotherhood but to continue in the world leave such people alone the day of the holy spirit the day the holy spirit will catch up with them they will also change our lord jesus christ enjoined his disciples saying if they loved him they should keep his commandments and that he will pray the father to send the comforter to come and dwell with them our Lord Jesus Christ knew that man is evil. He was then of the world and more so of the flesh. What could the flesh do if the Holy Spirit did not come? This promise of the Holy Spirit is for us and for our generation. If you are not endowed with the Holy Spirit, you cannot forsake sins and you cannot practice the words of God. The children of God are born with the Holy Spirit inherent in them. They do not commit any sinful acts. This is why you will see a child practicing the words of God in its infancy without being taught by anyone all the same you may see another person who has never practiced the words of god but in his old age you find him preaching and practicing the words of god in such a situation you do not need to doubt he is one of the converse which have been foretold. Redwin, I do not I do not take you further. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.